Today we're talking about crypto gaming and taking a look at a project that hasn't even launched yet and we're also going to dive into some other projects and tell you exactly why I am bullish on them and dive into the analytics of those ecosystems. But before we do that, I do have a completely free Discord. If you want to join, have a chat with me. I even go ahead and post what I am doing with my investments so we can have a look. The recent buy I did was $100 worth of VRA. I am not a millionaire by any means. Hopefully by the end of the next bull market, we will all be millionaires. But if you want to have a chat with me, see what I'm doing, then definitely feel free to join the Discord down below. It's completely free and you know we join a community of like-minded people talk about different plays and so on and so forth oh and if you are new to the channel make sure you subscribe smash the like button and let's talk about these crypto gaming projects so the first project on the list today is going to be ready games network and this is a very interesting project in my opinion because what they're trying to do is they are trying to cater to the web 2 gaming ecosystems and they are trying to bring them on to web 3. So they have a public SDK or software development kit that, you know, builders and ecosystem developers can actually utilize to bring their web two game to web three. And this is utilizing the ready games network. So it's very interesting in terms of mission and what they're trying to do with this ecosystem. And they have this RDYX token that isn't even out just yet. So what you can do right now is you can actually click apply for whitelist. It's going to bring you to a page where you can fill out your information. Of course, I mean, you can put whichever name you want, kind of, I just put Eric, your last name, put whatever you want, or put your actual name, the studio company name, you can put none if you have nothing, so on and so forth. And you can submit that in the hopes of getting accepted for this whitelist for their new token. But if I give you more information about their vision and mission and exactly why they're trying to do this, and I think it integrates very well with the future of blockchain gaming as we can bring more Web2 gamers to Web3, well, they want to be a Layer 3 software as a service, meaning that they want to be bringing games on chain without players having to exit the game at any point to complete their Web3 onboarding. Now, on top top of that, they also have this layer zero interoperability, which is basically achieved by using the account abstraction for players and publishers so that game assets, player identities and inventories can easily be migrated between layer ones and layer twos blockchain providers without any delays or without any frictions within the game itself. So this is a bit more technical than usual, but to give you a quick overview of account abstraction and how it actually works and how it's going to help crypto adoption as well as gaming adoption in blockchain games, the first process that we know of is we have externally owned accounts. So your MetaMask, whatever wallet you're using, you have to then create an account on this third party. You have to, you know, store your seed phrase somewhere, not give it to your neighbor because then you lose all your crypto. Then you have to purchase funds. You have to interact with the blockchain, pay gas fees, wait for the transaction to be confirmed. And once it's confirmed, then boom, you have the assets within your wallet. Now, although this may not be super complicated for your average crypto user who knows what they're doing it can be very complicated for a beginner and just remember when you tried your first time you know purchasing something I was googling absolutely everything because I had no idea how anything worked but with account abstraction, they are essentially removing the use of the EOA or the externally owned account. So this is going to make it a lot easier for people to onboard because there's a lot less steps in this transaction process. So in a nutshell, users are going to be interacting with the smart contract directly without having to have an EOA. And we can see here with this diagram that the user is going to be doing an operation, it's gonna get bundled up, entry into the point contract, and then it's going to execute this instruction. So ultimately,
definitely this makes it a lot easier for people to get involved in crypto gaming, in crypto in general, and Ready Games is trying to cater to this audience because remember, they are going to bring Web2 games and ecosystems onto Web3 without it being a hassle. So in terms of utility for their upcoming token, they have governance, they also have efficient NFT mining, and they also have cross game ownership. And taking a look at what we have in terms of tokenomics here, the total supply of this token is not actually 1 million, it is going to be 1 billion. So there is a bit of a typo here. The public sale is going to be about one to 2% of the total token supply, so in anywhere between 10 and 20 million tokens. And to take a look at the funding behind this, if we go on to crypto rank, of course, you need to have that website in your favorites, but we can see that the raise was actually in May of 2022. And some of the key investors here, we have Polygon Ventures, a very you know reputable source here. We have other ones as well. I'm not too familiar with them, but we also have Bitcraft Ventures, which is the lead in this funding round. And we can also take a look at their portfolio. What have they been invested in? It's mainly GameFi, which is obviously a good thing. Ready games, we're talking about gaming, and this fund is investing in gaming related projects. And if we take a look at, you know, what type of projects have they invested in? Well, we have some of the top tier games here. So we have Immutable X, we have YYG, so on and so forth. And we can also take a look at, you know, when they got into these projects. I was interested in seeing when they got into IMX. If we take a look at this, we can put all of this down here. And we can see that they actually got into Immutable X in the round of September 14th, 2021, Series B round. So they were in definitely early and of course they were definitely making money on IMX and most of their other investments. So definitely keep ready games on your watch list. Like I said, the token isn't out yet, but keep an eye out on this one. And right now they actually are running a bit of a campaign because this game here, Rune Stone Keeper is going to launch within the ready games network. And if you go to their website, you can actually learn about their game and you can sign up for this beta. Now this is going to take you to Gleam, which is essentially a little campaign they're running and you can win from 20,000 RDYX prize pool by completing a few of these tasks. So if you are, you know, trying to get maybe an airdrop or, you know, try to get some free money, you could try and do this. Doesn't mean you're going to win, but it's something that you could do to try and get your hands on RDYX before it even launches. And of course, if you're interested in this ecosystem, don't forget that whitelist submission form. I submitted it. Hopefully they pick some of of us and some of us can get in early. Now, moving on to another ecosystem we need to talk about. We need to talk about Avalanche. I really do like AVAX as a whole. Just the token itself, I think, has a tremendous amount of potential. We've seen the run it has had over the last few weeks from going from about $8 all the way to $24. And we can see right now it's sitting at $22. But the reason I bring up AVAX is not only because I like it as a coin itself, I am absolutely loving their ecosystem and especially if we talk about crypto gaming. So on AVAX, there are subnets which are essentially little ecosystems within AVAX itself and those ecosystems can build whatever they want and a big part of Avalanche's small ecosystems or subnets are gaming ecosystems. So if we take a look at, you know, some projects that are being built on these subnets, what you can do is you can go onto AVAX's website, you can go down to projects, you can click and filter throughout different type of ecosystems or narratives you're looking at. And if we take a look, you know, all projects, but what we want to specifically focus on here is gaming. So if we go on to gaming, you can see the different games that are on AVAX's subnets. 
So from here, what you could do is you could do your own research, have a look at these different games, have a look at these different subnets. And if we talk about more gaming, well, we have a bunch of games that, you know, people have already talked about. We can talk about Domi Online. We can talk about Shrapnel, Betswirl, all of these very popular ecosystems within AVAX itself. You can do your own research and potentially even wait for projects that are, you know, upcoming because we have a launching soon type of project hab here that you can have a look at. And of course, do your own research before investing in any of these. But if we continue talking about AVAX and AVAX's subnets, we need to talk about Beam because this one here has been going absolutely crazy over the last weeks and partly in due because Alex Becker's talked about it, he's bought it. And I do really like this ecosystem because it is a subnet of AVAX. I'm bullish on AVAX, I'm bullish on Beam as well. But taking a look at just what has happened, this was actually a migration from the Merit Circle DAO. So this token here, which is now at about $1.10 and it's still going up. If we take a look, you know, at the last month, it's only gone up. If we take a look at its all-time chart, obviously it was crazy down during the bear market, but right now it has been going back up and there is a migration happening for this token. So every MC is being converted into a hundred beam that's the migration that's happening. And Beam is now the coin you want to be holding on to. So if we take a look at its market cap, we're sitting at a $460 million market cap. The volume is pouring in on this one, around 52 million. In terms of tokenomics, we're seeing about 41 billion out of 62 billion tokens in circulation. And something else I really do like about Beam is the fact that it's listed on most of the bigger centralized exchanges with Binance here and Bybit and other ones as well. So Beam is not just another crypto gaming project, it's actually an infrastructure that is inviting builders and developers to build with Beam. Now, if you understand that, well, of course, Beam is built under AVAX's subnet. I'm bullish on AVAX, so if Beam is utilizing AVAX, and then you have other projects building Beam, which is ultimately, you know, utilizing AVAX as subnet, well, you kind of see the chain reaction here as to why I'm bullish on AVAX and Beam and basically any other project that would choose Beam to build its ecosystem. Now that's obviously all pretty said and done, but are people even utilizing Beam as a subnet? We can have a look at the statistics here and just over the last few weeks, and you have to understand that this migration to Beam happened towards the end of October, which is why we don't see anything before the end of October. But we can see here that this is active addresses. So there was a bit of a peak and then it was kind of modest over the last few days. But just today alone, I mean, we're seeing 14,000 new addresses being created, which is absolutely absurd. It means that, you know, people are definitely catching wind of Beam, catching wind of this subnet on AVAX and they are definitely going ahead and creating a wallet. And taking a look at transactions once again, I mean, we did peak around 17,000 transactions today. And we also see that the gas being used on this blockchain is the Beam coin itself. And as of now, there's been 444 million Beam coins being used for gas. So you can have a look at all of this. I'm gonna leave all these statistics down in the description below. Have a look at it, but definitely would be adding Beam to your watch list. It is up, you know, 17% today. So maybe wait for a bit of consolidation, but this one is definitely a must have on your watch list. Now, moving on to another subnet of AVAX. We've talked about this one before, but this is Playa Bull Games. And this one here has had a bit of a run over the last few weeks. If we take a look at the month, I mean, it is up 730%. 
I did purchase some right around three to or 3.2 tenths of a penny. So right around here, I did post that in my discord. So that play is up about 100% a bit more. But nonetheless, I mean, playable, in my opinion, is a very interesting ecosystem. They have their own nodes. So if we take a look at their explorer on their own blockchain, because again, very similar to Beam, they are, you know, on their own blockchain within AVAX's subnets, a market cap of, you know, $45 million. So a much smaller market cap than Beam here at about 10 times lower. But of course, you have to understand a difference between these two. Playable here is more catered to bringing games on, whereas Beam is more of an infrastructure type play and Playable is more of the gaming aspect type play. But again, I still think that, you know, because of the narrative of AVAX and them using AVAX's subnets, I am very bullish on Playable. I think, you know, it has potential, but you have to consider the tokenomics behind this one because they do run with a node model, meaning that there's going to be more inflation coming as these nodes do emit tokens over time. But we've seen that with so many gaming ecosystems, and I don't think that this next bull market is going to be hindered by this inflation that could happen with these nodes. So again, put playable on your watch list. I would definitely recommend looking into this one. They have about five playable games right now, and their team is definitely active on their Discord. Now, last but not least, I wanted to give a special shout out to Veracity as I have been talking about this one in the Discord and it's finally breaking above its resistance here of about 7.7 .7 tenths of a penny. So hopefully it can hold above it, find some support if it does come back here. But that one here I've been talking about for a very long time in the Discord. So with all of that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know your thoughts on the plays today. Let me know if you hold them, if you're trying to buy them or whatever the case may be. I love hearing your guys' feedback. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. Thank you guys so much for the support. You guys are absolutely unreal. Smash the like button and I'll catch you guys in my next video. Peace.